Hi, this is Jay Buzzsaw, 79, here with my next book uh, from Age Wars. This is going to be my Beastmaster spell book, um, so I'm just going to go over it real quick. And uh, I try to keep the video about eight minutes if I can, so we'll get right into it here. All right, so the first thing up here, oh, Jesus. So the first thing up here will be the mage, of course, here in the corner, will be the uh, Beastmaster. So I'm just trying to play over here, trying to make it as clear as I can. I apologize. It's off my laptop, and I have kind of a crappier uh, camera. Uh, so yeah, double double mana crystals, as well as the Beastmaster ring and the pixie to open up with. Um, basically, she's only going to help give me actions for the enchanting. Tangles and Rajan's Fury. Tangles can kind of control stuff to make sure things don't get away from me, or I can basically hold them in place so I can get away. So think of basically this as a solid CC piece. This is my global buff um, to keep stuff with charging, so kind of like that. Uh, I had the other wall in here. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. I apologize for that. Uh, but basically just for CC and stuff. Again, most people don't want to go through this unless they have to, and then, well, you deal with it as it happens then. Uh, I did have four boulders in here at one point, but I did cut two of these uh, for points and then added the, uh, the force hammer instead is what I ended up doing instead. Uh, just because the force hammer is kind of nice to deal with conjurations. There's a certain conjurations I want to kill, and I want to kill them generally fast and effectively. And that's why that's there. Four timber wolves, because they're tanky as hell for pets. They're super good pets. Um, I like them a lot. Uh, I like to run mainly this as my uh, pet, generally. Just because of the fact that they have fast and they're flying so... They're flying, so there's not a lot of resistance to them, except for like certain things like angels and stuff. But these are so fast to getting out that basically people don't deal with them right away, I found. Those that do deal with them complain about it and, and don't like dealing with them. And if you pet them, it kind of makes them a little more dangerous, giving them a fourth dice, an armor, and then extra hit points also. It just kind of makes them a threat, even though they don't want to admit it. So I'm running six of those, and then I ran six boxes. Sort of the same reason with the fast, but... Again, I don't feel as if I have enough to deal with stuff, so I ran six foxes also. Um, the fast is kind of nice because generally, especially early on, being able to bounce two zones and kind of get in people's faces. Uh, some people, it really annoys them for disrupting their plans. Uh, always going to run probably a steel type grizzly because he's so good, especially later in the game if you can get him out. Uh, early on, it puts a lot of pressure out there, again, depending where you summon it. Uh, cat, I like the cat because he's elusive and fast, so double bounces to the zones, gets the charge bonus. Uh, I can't pet him, but still he gets an extra charge bonus, which puts him at five dice for sure. If you put some strength on him, now you're talking seven dice with elusive, and he just gets really, really good. Plus he has a uh, eight-up defense on him. Uh, other kitty, new kitty is from Academy, and basically I figured, well, if I'm dropping... 12 level 1 monsters probably going to get killed. And then mid late game, he is so cheap and just still really good for what he does. You can, I don't think he is legendary. Let me just go back a page, is he? He is, yeah, he is legendary. So I'm sorry, I guess you can't pet him. That'd be something, wouldn't it though? All right, so we got the knife in here then. Since you're level 5, you get the extra dice set, actually have 4 dice, and then because the Beastmaster makes it 5 dice. And if you hit these 5 dice, it gives you another melee. Which you can basically give into your uh, your pet, and then because if you have your pet with you, essentially just getting two dice if you hit with a knife. So that's really cool. I threw the bear armor in. I might change this to the new bug, whatever it is, armor instead. Um, elemental cloak always very good too. I really like elemental cloak a lot. I chose to put this in instead of the other one. With the, I forget what it's called, the Beastmaster, whatever, head slash cloak combo thing he's got. Uh, chose to run this belt here over the regeneration belt because this has one less regeneration, but it does have armor, which I think is very useful. Uh, here we're going to be talking basically about running all the leathers, so leather boots, pants, gloves, and of course the Eagle Claw boots, so that way I can't get slid across the floor and get the crap kicked out of me. Very useful. Uh, double strengths up here with the double regrowth down here just to try to keep stuff alive. Uh, regrowth, I'm not sure about it. I might pull that out and I'll explain why in a second. Here's a flip. So I wanted to really concentrate on a spell book that ran 
mostly minor creatures as far as like level ones and twos and dealt with these extra crazy enchantments from the academy. So like if you run with the badger ferocity right here, you get to roll basically double strike. So if you have a pet that has fast speed on it, so for example, like the avion birds, you get that up to say five dice, you double strike with it. You got 10 dice coming in twice. So, uh, I do have the second chance in here. And my only question about second chance, I'm not sure if anybody is watching this and can tell me the answer for this. That'd be awesome. And this is my presumption that when a creature is brought back with second chance on it, all the enchantments attached to that creature also go to the grave. Because technically it did die. And I just don't know about that for sure. But also the fact that what if that was a pet? Does it stay petted or not? Or do you have to repay for it since it was brought back from the grave? Again, my assumption is yes, you would have to pay for the repet uh, upon it being resummoned to the field. So if anybody knows the answer, please go ahead and throw me that answer. Uh, gator toughness again, because basically I don't like having to decide between rhino hide for armor and as well as the uh, health increase for the other one. Uh, so this is kind of the mid-grade between both that I'd rather have this than dealing with that. Saying it's thirst because the fact that it's uh, for those minor creatures, again, you don't have to pay any reveal cost, and you still get the thirst, which is really awesome for rolling lots of dice like this. Uh, of course, if you're swarming, you want to run the March for Death, and then I did decide to run a redirect just because it negates an attack, and that's my phone going off. I apologize for that. Uh, also, it also had deals two damage back. Uh, as we come to the end here, I am running two dissolves and two dispels. I am not running seeking dispel because I'd rather deal with what my opponent is flipping up than deal with what they have hidden. I just think that I'd rather deal with what I can see and then kind of make my judgment call for what I need to do rather than kind of guess and throw extra mana for something. Uh, force push because force push is awesome. You can bash people just into the wall to do the three damage. Uh, also allows you to kind of set the battlefield to slide stuff around and you can tangle vine in place so it doesn't move. Uh, this card down here, knock, uh, knock down, has helped me so many times against the one person I play against. It has really helped them up because usually the fact that you cannot cast attack spells really screws people over, especially if you're kind of figuring that they might start blowing the hell out of you. So to the last page, I have the minor heal as well as mend. I originally had two of these and like a just generic heal, but I took that out for points because mend is cheaper. And I think what I might do is pull these two out perhaps and then run four just mends in here for point cost. I mean, yeah, it's two less dice, but if, you know, I mean, it is again, uh, only one point and as regular minor heals, two points, I can run two heals to every one for being a novice. So that's kind of why I'm thinking that. Final page, I did add in here Falcon Precision near the end and Teleport. Teleport is self-explanatory, I think, almost every book. I can't think of a reason why you would not have at least one Teleport. Uh, the Falcon Precision basically to deal with the Force Master as well as the... Uh, anybody else who likes to use the unavoidable stuff, mainly the Force Master. So that is my book for my Beast Master. Tell me what you think. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, comment, subscribe, likes, all those other things would be appreciative. Uh, any feedback is always welcome. So I apologize this did go over a little bit, but it happens. Uh, this is Jay Buzzsaw79 signing off saying thanks for watching and wanted to thank you quickly before I stop uh, for the feedback I've gotten so far for the Mage Wars stuff. I didn't realize it would be that well received, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, so please keep watching uh, for the next books that will finish out the core game. Uh, so it'll be the Warlock and Priestess coming up yet, and then I will move on to the other books from there. So again, thank you for watching.